By the, by the way, there, there are a lot of people in government who, who help us and allow us to have an economy that works and, and allow entrepreneurs and, and, and business leaders of various kinds to start businesses and create jobs. We, we all recognize that. That's an important thing. Don't forget, by the way, government doesn't invent those people out of thin air. We pay for those people with our taxes. We're paying for those resources that we receive. But, but to say what he said is to say that, that, uh, uh, that Steve Jobs didn't, didn't build Apple Computer or, or that, that Bill Gates didn't build Microsoft or that Henry Ford didn't build Ford Motor Company or that uh, Ray Kroc didn't build McDonald's or, or that Papa John's didn't build Papa John's Pizza. He, look, it, it is, this is the height of foolishness. It shows how out of touch he is with the character of America. It's one more reason why his policies have failed. It's one more reason why we have to replace him in November. And, and, by, and by the way, for all those in this room who didn't start a business, and that's the great majority of people in our country, I hope you understand that the logic of what the president said extends to all of you. Because what he's saying is that if someone has succeeded, if they built something, he's saying they didn't really build it. No, it was the government. It was the government that takes responsibility. So for the student in school that works hard to get on the honor roll, that's not really them. That's their teacher that did that and the government that, that paid for it. And if, and if somebody uh, came here across the border legally and brought their family seeking a better life, that their success is not due to them. No, no, they didn't build it. The government gets credit for that. And if a person in their job says, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work hard and get more skills and I got a promotion. That promotion, oh, by the way, that's not yours. That's thanks to government. That's where this leads. When you attack success like this president has, you will see under this president less success. I will celebrate success, reward success, encourage it, help it in our kids and our families. We'll be a more successful and prosperous nation with more jobs and rising income. That's the direction for America, not this denigration of success and achievement in America. Barack Obama's attempt to denigrate and diminish the achievement of the individual diminishes us all. We all, of course, recognize the power of all of us working together. We're a united nation. He divides us. He tries to divide America, tear America apart. He tries to diminish those who've been successful in one walk of life or another. It's simply wrong. It is not the right course for America's strength. We need to draw on the people of America individually, collectively, so we can overcome the challenges we face. And I know we're going to do it. I know how it is. we have to restore economic freedom in this country. And I mean, you see, America's economy runs on freedom. It is not driven by government. It's driven by free people pursuing their dreams. And so we've seen during this presidency one step after another that's made it harder for people to see freedom in enterprise here. We raise taxes on small businesses. That's got to end. We've got to keep them down, lower them. We add regulation at a rate three times higher than the last president. This Dodd-Frank piece of legislation is killing small banks. We've also seen health care costs go through the roof. That's making it harder for small business. We have labor policies that in many cases are not fair to members of of our working community and, and to their employers. These things have to change. I want to restore economic freedom because I've seen what it'll do. As I've gone across the country these last couple of years, I'm just blown away by the entrepreneurs and innovators in America. I, I, met, I met someone you may know, a neighbor, a neighbor from Illinois. Well, it's not exactly a neighbor, but one, step, one state over. Um, I met a guy from Illinois, Jim Leotone, and, and Jim... Uh, Jim didn't do so well in school. He, he was second from the bottom in his high school class. His dad said, either you get into college or go into the military. And his son said, well, I, I'd like another option. I'd like to be able to borrow money from your dad to start a little business. And uh, his dad agreed. They'd split the business 50-50 about. And uh, if he could pay back the loan that he borrowed and w with the interest on it, why, he could go on with his business career. And so he loaned him the money. And then Jim found out that with the money he got, he couldn't begin to open a restaurant because it costs a lot more than he thought. 
I mean, just to put in the griddle, you know, to make the hot dogs and the hamburgers and the, the, the venting hood and all that. Well, that, it costs a lot more money than what he was able to get from his dad. And so all he could make was sandwiches. So he worked out of the garage and made sandwiches and then delivered them to people. Now, this little idea that he fought for and that he risked for, and without thanks to the government for having built it, <laughs> this little business is now known as Jimmy John's. And... Uh, He has, there are, there are 1,200 Jimmy John stores in this country. Now, of course, he couldn't have those stores without roads to get to people, and we thank the people for building the roads, and, and he couldn't have people delivering sandwiches unless they had a driver's license, so thank you to the DMV. But, you know, I mean, we recognize that, that we're, all, we're all working together, but I also think there's something special about Jimmy John Leotode and about the risk he took, and the work he's pursued, and the people around him in his enterprise who, like him, believed in his vision and worked for it. That's what makes America go. It's still in America. We're going to keep it alive and thriving in America. That's what's going to get America working again with the kind of jobs we deserve. This election about the soul of America is whether we're going to believe in America that's dominated by government. We're going to have a president who believes government is at the center of America, the nucleus of our economy, or whether instead we're going to have a president like me who believes in the vision of the Founding Fathers that God gave us our rights, and those rights include our freedom to pursue happiness as we choose. And it matters, you guys. It matters when we make that choice, because if we follow my path, we're going back to work. We're going to have a bright future with good jobs for ourselves and our kids, and we'll protect freedom and be the hope of the earth. Thank you so very much. Thank you. The attack on religious freedom is definitely not the USA or the land of the free that we were born and raised in, and I would really like to hear what you have to say about, about that. Yeah, thank you. Um, Religious liberty, our first freedom of those enumer enumerated in the Bill of Rights. And, and the president and his administration said they are going to usurp your religious freedom by demanding that you provide products to your employees, if you're the Catholic Church, that violate your own conscience. And so whether it's a, a, a Catholic business person or the Catholic Church itself, they're being told what they have to do that violates their religious conscience. That attack on religious freedom, I think, is a, is a dangerous and unfortunate precedent. And I know we're not all Catholic in this room. Many presumably are. But I feel that we're all Catholic today in our, in our battle to make sure we preserve religious liberty and tolerance and freedom in this country. It is essential for us to push back against that. I, uh, I will say it again. That's one more good reason to get rid of Obamacare, and I'm going to get that done. The first day I'm in office, we're going to go to get rid of Obamacare. Thank you. Now you think I'd started with that. That's the line I should have begun with, right? Okay, I got one more question. Here's a man in a, in a Hawaiian shirt there. How are you? No pun intended. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your stamina and integrity that you represent. And with that, I know that you want to preserve the Constitution of the United States. And with part of the responsibility of the presidency is the uh, United Nations representative, our State Department. And um, in, with that, we all know that s some of their policies are trying to backdoor and tear down our freedoms. Um, can you address that? Yeah, I sure can. Um, I, I know there are some who I, I, I fully believe would say, just let's just get out of the UN. I know there are many people who feel that, but I, I actually, 
I actually think you need to have a place to talk to other people, even if you know they're lying, so you could at least... <laughs> At, le at least you can hear what they have to say and sort of get what their propaganda is. And, and, and by the way, I appreciate a few of the things the U.N. does, like the IAEA. This is the folks that, that, that goes around and determines who's violating the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty. And, and so there are, some, there are some things that are good. There are a lot of things that are not good. And, and turning to the United Nations to, t to tell us how to raise our kids or whether we can have the Second Amendment rights that our Constitution gave us. Our, I mean, these, that is the wrong way to go, all right? Do not cede sovereignty. I'm happy to talk there. I'm not willing to give American sovereignty in any way, shape, or form to the United Nations or any other body. We are a free nation. We fought for freedom and independence. We're going to keep freedom and independence. Thank you. You guys, you are the best. We are going to take back Washington. We're